Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Channel S. As usual, uh, on this uh, special show, we bring a very good friend of the community or the country, and today is no exception. Before I introduce him, let's go and see a video clip on him. Robert Scott, born in Southend, Essex, studied archaeology and anthropology in Cambridge. Later, his Masters in Development Studies took him to Bangladesh in 1996. Robert lived in Old Dhaka, Shodurghat, while he lived in Bangladesh. He travelled the country to various social development projects. He identified areas where help was needed and allocated funds from foreign donors. Robert had a Christian upbringing. His strong religious faith was the inspiration to support the people who needed the help most. Later, Robert took his wife Becky, who is a doctor, to Bangladesh. They both worked with various charity organizations while living there. In the UK, through charity organization Homework Helpers, Robert helped Bangladesh children with their homework for over 20 years. We have just seen a documentary on our guest, but let's start the conversation with him. He is Robert Scott. Welcome to Channel S. Thank you for inviting me. Where were you born? I was born in very close to South End in Essex and lived there for the first 18 years of my life. And then? After school, uh, I went to university at Cambridge to study archaeology and anthropology. Um, and then I wanted to make the anthropology side of things a bit more useful. And so I did a, a development studies master's in London. Explain what is anthropology. Anthropology um, is the study of of cultures, cultures. studies uh, around the world. It began in a way as a study of kind of colonial peoples, so we British people would know how to rule them. So it wasn't necessarily a very good subject from that point of view, but over time it's become much more understanding of other people, valuing their society and culture, and partly seeing what we can learn from it. But it's understanding other people in their difference from us. And that was in the university? Yes, at university that's Did right. you have many, you know, Asian South Asian friends? Not particularly, and, and certainly growing up um, where I grew up in South End, it was a largely white area. Mm -hmm. In my um, school of 800 boys, there may be five or six boys from a, a South Asian background, and they weren't treated very well. No. And we were often acted quite racistly towards them. At university, I did have some South Asian friends, but again, not very many. But I think there is a lot nowadays. Yes, no, that's right, know. yes. Yeah. So when did you get involved with religious faith, you know, in a deeper mm. manner? Well, I was always brought up uh, by my parents to be a Christian, although they probably didn't teach me much, actually. They uh, formally as such, but they showed me by example what it was to follow Jesus the Messiah, being loving and kind and generous and hospitable. But it was really going to university that there I was part of a church that thoroughly grounded me um, in the Holy Scriptures and, and deepened my faith and helped me to have it as my own and not just my parents' faith in a way, um, and a desire to want to follow Jesus in every area of my life, uh, loving my neighbour and, and loving God. And then in Masters? Yeah, my Masters um, in Development Studies, I hoped that it would take me overseas to show in many ways practical love um, for people who might not be in as good a situation as, as we were uh, in Britain, maybe um, being involved in development projects, and just practically showing love for neighbour that Jesus commands us to show. So wh wh where was it? Which university? Um, so that Masters was, the, was at the School of Oriental and African Studies in, in London. In London? Yeah. So that's where there were many Asians? Yeah, there were, certainly within the university. I, I don't know if you know the School of Oriental and African Studies, but it's almost like where the whole universe meets. There are so many people from so many different backgrounds mm -hmm. um, studying there. Yes, and met, met lots of, of different people. Um, one summer, actually, during university, um, I visited India for one month, mm -hmm. um, but hadn't really got any experience of Bangladesh until after my master's. Right. Did you get involved with Bangladesh? Um, Bangladesh, I first went to Bangladesh in 1996-97. I'd wanted some practical experience to go with my Development Studies Masters, and I applied to various NGOs around the world, and none of them would have me. Um, but I ended up in Bangladesh, working for right. the Church of Bangladesh and their social development programs. It must have been the providence of God that took me there. And that was in Dhaka? That was, yes, based in Dhaka. I was uh, living in old Dhaka, near Shodogat, um, right. and uh, involved in projects that were around the country, in Mehapur in the west, in Halwagat in the north, uh, up um, Borishal further south. 
I'd visit those projects, try to evaluate them, try to write project reports um, um, and funding requests to foreign donors, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Did you visit other parts of Bangladesh? A little bit, but not, not, not masses, partly because I was too busy um, working, um, okay. miming sing a little bit, but didn't get, unfortunately, to Cox's Bazaar or to the tea gardens uh, in Select. Select. Yeah. How long did you stay in, in Bangladesh? So that, was, that, time. that time was nine months. And when did you get married? Um, just a year after coming to Bangladesh, coming back from Bangladesh, uh, married my wife, who became a doctor. Doctor? Yeah. Becky? Becky, that's right. Becky. Yes. And um, both of you now, did you have a common goal? Well, I th yeah, I think that's, that's very true. So we were both um, uh, following Jesus, the Messiah, and wanting to use the gifts that he'd given us um, for the community. And my wife was a, a doctor and me involved in, in developing uh, projects and work. It seemed like we could go to somewhere like Bangladesh and to make right. the most of our, our gifts and abilities in, in that way. And did you work for a charity? I worked um, for a couple of charities um, after that. So one um, was actually the government regulator of charities, the Charity right. Commission. Um, but then I worked for the World Health Organization and an epilepsy charity, trying to set up projects in developing countries to see how to treat epilepsy cheaply. What, based in this country? It was based in this country, but we would travel out to, we were trying to set up projects in four countries, um, China, Zimbabwe, Senegal and Argentina, to show that you could do it relatively cheaply um, and nurse-led. So mm -hmm. in a developing country that didn't have many resources, um, they could do it um, relatively easily. Tell us about Homework Helpers. Mm. Yeah, during, what is it? Homework Helpers. So during that time, um, because we'd always thought we would go to somewhere like Bangladesh, um, we thought, how can we get um, stuck into the Bangladeshi community in this country? Partly as practice to see if we could relate to Bangladeshi people. Um, and our, our church, or a group of churches in, in Tower Hamlets, ran um, a program called Homework Helpers. Uh, and it does exactly what it says. It, it goes into to people's homes um, to help with the children's homework. Uh, at the time that we were part of that, uh, many Bangladeshi parents uh, were not so able to help their children with their schoolwork, either because their, their English wasn't so good, or if they hadn't been educated in this country, they might not understand the system so well. Mm -hmm. And so this was just a practical way of showing love for our neighbours um, by helping uh, Bangladeshi neighbours in particular um, with their children's homework. And we helped one particular family for five or six years or so, um, seeing their children grow up. We, we went to uh, right. one of their weddings recently, which is very right. exciting. So how, lo how long did it continue? So that we then uh, ended up running the whole scheme um, and it went on for about 20 years or so 20 years and we probably had maybe 150 to 200 families who benefited from that largely right. in Tower Hamlets um, but sometimes in other parts of London where there are Bangladeshi people like in Camden around the Euston station is it still in existence um, sadly in well, it's not, no, it's not. And in some sense, it's not sad. It's sad for us, we, we're not doing it anymore. But actually, it's partly because the community has got... Integrated. More, exactly, more integrated. Their education has risen and they don't need our help, which in many ways is very good. Um, yeah, we're glad not to be needed in that way, not to have to help. Um, there's other things we can do, but it's great that um, partly uh, other schemes are set up and parents are much more able, able to help. But yeah, education has improved, I think, across the board, particularly in Tower Hamlets. Tell us about what you did in understanding other religions, mm. such as Islam. Yeah, well, well living in, in Tower Hamlets and working in Tower Hamlets and working amongst Bangladeshi people, obviously um, there's lots of Islam going on. Um, Bangladeshi people, almost all of them would, would consider themselves uh, Muslim people. And as we sought to uh, help their children with their schoolwork, and as I worked um, eventually for, for a church, uh, we began to engage in, in interfaith dialogue. We set up what we called meetings for better understanding. Uh, not a debate where we have a big fight and disagree, but nor a meeting where we just all agree, because clearly there are differences between us. But can we talk about those but differences? But the end result is way? there is one God. Absolutely, there is yeah. one God, that's right, who made us yeah. and who made us all in his image. And so we're all worthy of respect and honour and we should treat one another like that. But we can explore differences in a, in a friendly, um, hopefully respectable way. And we did that um, over the last 10 years or so with different mosques in East London and Islamic groups. Bangladesh. Um, often Bangladeshi, but not exclusively. Yes, often. What did you do after 9-11? After 9-11, um, 
we try to build these kind of, of links between Christians and Muslims to help Christians not be fearful of Muslim people, not think that all Muslim people are terrorists, um, to say that all Muslim people, like everybody else, are made in God's image and worthy of respect mm -hmm. and dignity. Let's try and understand one another. And also for, for Muslim people to understand that we're not against them, we, we don't hate them. It's interesting, um, just recently actually, um, my wife was standing with a friend, a, a Bangladeshi Muslim friend, um, who uh, had a hijab on, and, and a big white guy just came up and shouted in her face for no reason whatsoever. Clearly that kind of thing happens. It's really unpleasant for unpleasant. the lady, but my wife to be there could support her friend, could say that's just wrong. I don't think that way. Isn't it awful how some people treat you? And we don't want to be like that. We want to, to build bridges. We want to share our faith and be open and honest with one another uh, out of respect and love for people in the community. Do you attend interfaith uh, groups, you know, gathering like they do in uh, East London Mosque? Yes, yeah, sometimes we have done and, and mm -hmm. sometimes um, I've done talks there. So, for example, we've looked at um, what happens on the Day of Judgment from a Christian or a Muslim perspective. Um, why do I believe the, the Bible uh, and why does the Muslim speaker believe the Quran? Quran? What do we think of who God is? Just to explore similarities and differences. And my conviction is that um, part of our, our love for neighbour is to, to share our faith. If we think that what we're doing is right and that, that following Jesus brings us safety from hellfire and brings us peace with God, we should share that out of love sure, for our neighbours. Sure, sure. We'll continue our discussion. We have to go for a short break. Sure. Viewers, stay with us. We'll be back soon. Welcome back. We are having a discussion about interfaith and um, the Bengali community and various religions. So after this 9-11 and you know, going around mm -hmm. to talk about racial and religious harmony, you decided to go to Silhet, did mm. you? That's right, yes. Yeah. And part, it's a mixture of reasons, really. Um, partly my wife uh, being a doctor in Tower Hamlets, she had lots of Saleti patients, and you couldn't always communicate very well, you'd need an interpreter. Um, so she found that frustrating. Um, partly in our, um, our work at the time with homework helpers, we couldn't always communicate very well with the parents. We wanted to be able to explain to them what was going on um, in their language. Um, and partly in the, the interfaith work that I was doing, sometimes people didn't understand what I what was, was saying. saying. And, and we want people to understand in their heart language so they can truly believe and come to know um, God and how you might mm. be saved from hellfire. Um, so we thought, how can we um, make the most of who we are with, with our gifts and our time? Can we go to Select? Can we learn some Sileti language that would be of use back in, in Tower Hamlets, particularly amongst Bangladeshi people there? So you went to Select? We did. We went to Select How Sillet long Town. for? We had 18 months uh, in Select Town in, in Upushur. And we in went to a language, That's right. Yeah. Uh, in Ibalok. And we went to a, a language school there. And they taught us uh, Sileti language. Um, and, and the script, um, the, the, the old Nagri script to, to read and write that, which was exciting. Yeah. Um, and then we did homeschooling for our children at the time and got to know people in the community to understand more of their right. culture. So you said we. Mm. We means what? Your children as well? Yep. So, um, yeah, one wife and three children. We, we all went together. How old were they? Um, I'm trying to remember. Um, our son was three. Um, our, our next girl, she I think was six, and the next one was eight. So I think it was eight, six, and three, roughly. Right. Yes. So you went to Silet. Yes. And you lived in Uposhohor. Yes. And within the area, there was this school mm. where you studied uh, Bangla? Just Sileti. No, no. Just Sileti. Shuddha Basha Bolte Parina. Right. But Apni Shuddha Basha Bolte So you started learning, mm. reading, mm. Uh, and speaking mm. Sileti Nagri. Yes, we did try. We did try. Mm -hmm. My wife is better than me, but yeah, we, 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 got, we made reasonable progress with, with understanding and with speaking. Um, and our children actually did some of the classes as well. And their Sileti accent was brilliant. It was a lot okay. better than ours and a lot better than children in Tower Hamlets going to Sileti on, on holidays. Afne, ekono Sileti mattavarun buzoin? Buzoin. Afne, Bangladesh was a Bangladesh Gia, 
আঠারো মাস থাকলা আঠারো মাস আঠারো মাস পরে টাওয়ার হ্যামলেট চাইলে টাওয়ার হ্যামলেট চাইলে নাও ইউ আর ফুলি ইকুইপড হ্যাঁ ফুলি ইকুইপড টু স্পিক টু সিলেটি পিপুল ইন সিলেটি আমরা আশা করি সু ওয়াজ ডুইং হার ইউ নো এজ এ ডক্টর ব্যাকি এজ এ ডক্টর অ্যান্ড ইউ এজ এ ইন্টারফেথ বিলিভার স্পিকিং টু দি কমিউনিটি লোকাল কমিউনিটি ইয়েস অ্যান্ড দ্য লোকাল কমিউনিটি সাম নিউলি অ্যারাইভড Yes. Yes, that's so right. So they did not uh, know about British culture. Not so much, that's not right. Not so much. So you know, you know, you know, English language or British way of life. Yes, yes. You know, you know. Yes, yes, yes. And as part of that, we helped to set up um, a bookshop and library yeah. in the Brick Lane area. Yes, I'll come to that in a second. For that I'll kind of purpose. I'll come to that. You know, you know, ফ্যামিলি হলে কমিউনিকেট করেননি বাংলায় সিলেটি ভাষায় ওকে তো আপনারা সিলেট থাকলা নাগরি ভাষা নাগরি স্ক্রিপ্ট সিলেটি ভাষা হিকলা নাগরি ফরতা ফরেননি ফরেননি একটা বই আমি ফরি ফরেন আচ্ছা ফ্লুয়েন্ট আসতে আসতে আমি 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 ফরি ওকে সিলেটিরা তো খুব বাউল সঙ্গীত বুকশপ <laughs> 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 where that's right it's just just off brick lane uh, on fashion street to be there for the community and um, so we have book, books in english books in bangla books in sileti but to be a place of welcome for people who um might not be very good at english we can do english classes with them but then for people who've lived it all their lives um, and speak sileti we could teach the sileti uh, reading uh, and writing so we've run some books of naam ta kita shantir boy shantir boy excellent yeah. fantastic tell us about the racial harmony within Tower Hamlets mm. and London. What we try to do, certainly from within our bookshop and within our family and more, more widely and with, within our church, is to recognise that we are different, but those differences shouldn't um, pull people apart. Um, so our bookshop and our library is welcoming of all kinds of people, mm. all colours of skins, ethnicity, uh, language, uh, background, religious background. Um, we come together as people made in God's image, but we can come together and talk about our, our differences and welcome one another, and we try to do that. Um, similarly, at home, we try to do that and have um, Sileti friends within our home and visit um, their homes too, to break down Sileti barriers. Sileti manus friendly, ni? Really? Mm. Oi, although, interestingly, we often found people more friendly in Sileti I think we, here. because partly because we were different we we were the novelty and so people wanted to, to get to meet us and But here people are busy exactly exactly <laughs> very busy everybody's doing two jobs children. and looking after their children yes, that's right Absolutely. yes that's yes, right yes you just stayed in Dhaka when you first went yes came back and you decided to live around Tower Hamlets that's right yes you been helping people mm-hmm. uh, in interfaith mm-hmm doing interfaith work and also community uh, cohesion and integration uh, trying yes. to mm. yes that's right by now you know a little bit about the culture a little bit yes a little, little bit. bit no <laughs> can't be little bit it's many many years yeah. so what do you think of the culture um i think what i things that we appreciated uh, particularly in select was people's hospitality and kindness to us as as a foreign as foreigners <laughs> um people's helpfulness so for example if our, our children got sick in select um people would come and would help and w- and would take us to to hospital or advise or if we phoned back here friends back here so oh my cousin lives in road 5 you live in road 6 he will come and and make sure you're all right so that's real kindness there um the strength and breadth of family connections um was very uh, impressive as well how families w- would would stick together and would help one another and would be with one another now I, i know there's lots of problems within families as there are everywhere um but we were struck by that that the love and the care and how family is important 
um, much more than, than right. in the West often. You took your children. Yep. What do they think about Bangladesh? What do they think Excellent. about Bangladesh? Well, they, they want to go back. They want to, to go back, although we, we looked at flights recently and they're far too expensive. Um, although by the time we were leaving, our son, who was five at the time, thought everything was spicy, that Coke was spicy, that water was spicy. <laughs> <laughs> but our, our daughters particularly, they love spicy food. They understood um, Saleti language a bit more. They, they enjoyed being there. They enjoyed the colour of um, Sawa Kamises. They enjoyed some of, the singing, kamis, yes. some of the singing. Um, my son enjoyed playing cricket in the street. They enjoyed some How of the old freedom. are they now? Um, our eldest uh, is 15. Uh, our middle girl is uh, 13. Um, and our youngest boy, he is 10. Are you going back? We'd like to go back um, if we can afford the flights. Maybe Channel S can sponsor us. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Month of December is expensive. <laughs> it is too expensive. Expensive. Right. I read somewhere you were teaching rag Nagri and Sileti mm. to uh, Sileti people. That's right. Yes. So we've run um, three or four series of these classes um, in our bookshop, Shantir Boy, to maybe five or six people each time, um, and linked up with some other students at SAWAS as well, the School of Science and yes. Studies, um, just to go through the, the workbook that I think James and Sue Lloyd Williams put together that you might have seen on, on your show before. Um, just to go through that, just teaching people that this is the, 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 the alphabet that best fits with your language, and there's some literature that, that, that you can read, and you can take pride in your language. You don't need to, to think that it's rubbish or, or slang, um, because what goes on in, in our heads in, in words is really important. What is your message to the community? You know, community cohesion, religious co cohesion, hmm. interfaith. I think don't be scared of other people. Um, talk to other people, find out about other people, uh, listen, uh, learn, understand we don't have to agree on everything no. to be good neighbours with one another. Um, I'm firmly convinced uh, as a Christian person, follower of Jesus, that he rescues us from hellfire and brings us peace with God. Others disagree, but we can talk about these things, understand one another better. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, even if it leads to better quality misunderstandings, we can at least um, be friendly with one another yeah. uh, and, and, and be a one community. In together. other words, understand Understanding one another. I try to, yes. Religious wise, mm. understanding one another culture wise, mm. country wise, color wise, mm. yes? I think that's right. And we okay. shouldn't be scared of doing so. We have learned a lot from mm. you and really inspired by your enthusiasm for the community and the country and the work you are doing. We wish to congratulate you. Channel S wants to thank you for coming to Channel S and we'll meet up soon. Viewers, we were having a very interesting discussion about different things from religious issues to community cohesion, language and so on. We'll be back soon with another guest. Stay tuned with Channel S. Thank you. <music>